uh, Joe Baines' podcast. We are calling it Passions, and it's basically about what whatever our passions are. Yeah. And uh, so, tell me, uh, tell me a bit about yourself first. So my name is Lubna. I'm Pakistani, pharmacist, and uh, I've lived in Scotland all my life. Yeah. And I've been doing. I'm an actress as well. Retrained about six years ago to do acting, and to do comedy, I retrained about four or five years ago. Okay, and, and what brings you to stand up? What made me do it? Yeah. Um, so you, my mum died, and I did a distraction from the grieving process. So I saw the laughing horse courses, and I thought maybe I should do them. Maybe I should do them. And then one night, just the day before, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. So I did. Really? So I did the laughing horse course, and then I spent a year um, doing evening classes at Strathclyde University, which I really enjoyed in comedy and got my certificate. Because hey. <laughs> so we, we need certificates. <laughs> we yeah. need, yeah. yeah. Is that bad? Because yeah. you're a shit comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that when, when the audience doesn't laugh, we can show them the certificate, yeah. right? We go, totally. look, you should be laughing, it's your fault. Exactly. Because I've got a certificate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. Yes, that's important. Uh, okay, so uh, what's, your, um, what's your passions in life? My passion is helping people. I really like to help people and training as a pharmacist has allowed me to do that. I also run a social enterprise. I used to run a social enterprise health charity but I wrapped it up a couple of years ago. But I run a social enterprise and that's helping people look after themselves better, look after their health and well-being, their physical and their mental health and well-being. And being a comedian also helps me do that as well because, you know, laughter is the best medicine to say. And uh, you say you're from Pakistan, right? Have you been to Pakistan or...? I went to Pakistan when I was 13. Oh. Yes, yeah, very long time ago, and I haven't been back. So, yeah. That's interesting because I, I I didn't go back to India for a long time. Yeah. But my brother used to go back every year. Yeah. And then about five years ago, I started going back. So I've been back about five times, and it's amazing. It's like there's so much that I didn't know about. Uh, I get to meet relatives who I don't know anything about. You know, like it's really interesting, and you get to you get to experience like a completely different culture. You get to experience a completely different way of life and the way of thinking, uh, which you don't get here. So it's a really interesting, yeah. So I go back like almost now every year. And I, and I love it, yeah. But I didn't used to. I didn't used to because I, was, uh, I didn't want it. Yeah, I'm, I suppose life takes you in different ways, isn't it? And it's never really been the right time. Uh, so maybe now, maybe with the comedy that might take me. Pakistan, that'd be nice. Which part of Pakistan are you from? I was born in Lahore. Lahore? Uh -huh. Is that Farsi? What is that? What uh, Punjabi. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, so that's across the border from yeah. uh, the Punjab. Mm -hmm. It is part uh, of the Punjab. Oh, is it? The, yeah. Okay, so yeah. I'm I'm originally from Jalanda. Oh, we might be related. We could be. Yeah. All brown people, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, the, the British. They took the Punjab and cut it in half. That's right. Thank you very I'm, much. I'm the yeah. opposite side from you. Yay! <laughs> we so so we, we probably speak the same language. Mera naam Jogaya. Mera naam Lubna, yeah. Oh, so, so we do. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, they just call it different things, but yeah. we basically speak the same language. Yeah. It's the same as like, uh, uh, I don't know, London and, uh, and Essex. Yeah, so I mean, know. I speak Urdu. My mum was actually Hindustani. She was, um, she was from Nagpur. And my dad was from Punjab, and so when the partition happened, my mum's Muslim family went across from India to Pakistan. And my mum grew up speaking Urdu, my father grew up speaking um, Punjabi. So they were a mixed kid, they were a mixed family, wow. I know. Which in those days, Whoa. before the partition, was okay, right? Now it's not. You know when she lived in, well, um, both my parents are dead now, but when they lived in Glasgow, she was, because my dad was, he was, he was a lecturer, he was really well known in Glasgow, and, um, my mum was always known as the Hindustani Aurat, you know. Aurat. <laughs> Aurat, yeah, the women, the Hindustani women, you know. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, she spoke her too. Yeah. Right? You know, so, um, yeah, that was the original mixed race family marriage. That's quite fun. And, and, and um, what, how, do you, how do you, have you any problems integrating into, into Scottish? I mean, do, do, they, do they see you any different? So I am. Um, I married a Scotsman for my sins, okay. and uh, and I've lived here all my life. Just about I lived four years in Cardiff, uh, where I had two of my children and did my PhD there. 
uh, the rest of the time I've lived in Scotland. And it's, I think when you're when you're a child, you don't you don't see the differences. But as you grow as as an adult, and you're asked the same question again and again, then and I think although we're more aware of racism now than we were when we were younger, um, we're just talking about it more. So I'm not going, I'm not I don't want to say it's more prevalent. It's, we're just aware of it more. Yeah. And it, we're challenging it more. Like when I did a gig. Um, yeah. My show this year was called the Asian Ellen DeGeneres, and I've never used the word Asian before in any of my titles. So it attracted quite a few brown people, and there was um, there was two women, two Caucasians at my gig one day, women. And after the show, they were walking up the stairs, and one of them said to the other woman, "I suppose that'll be her family." <laughs> and it could be. And it, it could be right. It wasn't. Yeah. It was just that. So I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, "Yeah, that's right. Us brown people, we're all related." <laughs> Just like all you white people are, but that means you're related to Putin and, and Trump, so actually I think you'll lose out. <laughs> and she's what? like, oh my god, oh my god, was I racist? Was I a wee bit racist? A wee bit but racist. You, you know, I, I tell you, okay, you know what surprises me most, right? Yeah. Coming down from yeah. uh, London. Up from London. Oh, up from London, yeah. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> Yeah, because in to London, down you go down to Brighton. Because in, in London we look down on everybody. I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's seeing brown people, right? Yeah. And then them having a Scottish accent, it blows me completely, right? Know. It's like um, it's like seeing a brown person with an English accent. Something like that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Why do you not talk like this in London? <laughs> it's it's like it, it's a, it's a disconnect in my brain. Like when I hear a brown person speaking in a in a strong Scottish accent, yeah. I'm like, it's it, it's the equivalent. Of like you know if you saw a white person speaking Punjabi, yeah. it would blow your brain, right? Absolutely, it's uh, so, yeah, and I'm I'm speaking posh Scottish as well. Oh, so. is it okay? <laughs> oh, it means because it's posh because I can understand. You. Yeah, true to yeah. So, so if it was the Glaswegians, you wouldn't be able to hear understand a word. Yeah, there, there's Glaswegians in my audience, and I have no idea what they're saying. They speak. They must be the common law, I don't know. No, is, no, right? no, 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 they've just got a stronger accent. I'm Glaswegian, I can't say that. We've just got a stronger accent. So we say different parts of Glasgow have different accents? Different parts of Glasgow have different accents, yeah, different parts of Scotland have different accents. Yeah, but, why, but why is, uh, my question is, why is there a stronger accent in Glasgow and then a, a normal accent in Glasgow, for a better word? Yeah, I, I think it just depends on... It depends on which area of the city yeah. you're speaking to, where the people belong. Um, I mean, I, I, I come from, I come from Polk Shields, right? And I remember my son's friend, um, his mum, when I met her for the first time, she said to me, you're from Glasgow, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. And I said, how do you know? And she said, well, I'm from Glasgow too. And I said, all right, okay. And then she said, but you're from Polk Shields. And I'm like, really? And she was from Githnick, which is just like, Two miles down the road, so it's that specific. And wow. North Glasgow will have a different accent, and East Glasgow will have a different accent. So it's just, yeah. just where it is. It's like London, though. Yeah, like Cockney in yeah. London, uh, and then the same. yeah, I suppose it's just you, in London you can understand everybody. You know, like <laughs> I understand everybody in Glasgow as well. Yeah. Just few yeah. brown people like I understand. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I was on the bus uh, on one of their trips to uh, Edinburgh yeah. and I, I just happened to be sitting next to this Indian guy yeah. who I basically I ended up becoming friends with yeah. and exchanging Facebook and everything and we and I've met up with him now several times nice. but he has the most the strongest Glaswegian accent and it was the first time that Hardy Polly totally sang? <laughs> no, it wasn't that. No, it was, that, that it, was the, it was the first time I'd come across a brown person with a really strong Glaswegian accent, yeah, I used to and have it that. just bl blew my mind yeah. that that this guy was talking like this. I thought at first he was putting it on, you know, like yeah. almost, but he just kept doing it. And I was thinking <laughs> maybe that is his real accent. You know, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to appear racist. <laughs> you know, to a brown guy, right? So, yeah. and and you like, can be racist to it, a brown guy. You could, yeah. I, I, I do this joke is that um, uh, you know I'm not racist to brown people because I could be related to them. Right? I probably am because I like got like 27 yeah, million cousins, yeah, and they all look the same, right? Yeah. Yes. Totally. So, so what makes you? Um, so my my podcast is laugh, learn, love, right? Yeah. So what makes you laugh? 
that's my question. What makes me laugh? Yeah. I suppose funny people, jokes, silly things. I like silly things. I like more calm wise. I like, um, I just want to show how old I am, but I like things like Dave Allen. Um, I liked impressions, Mike Yarwood. So those sort of things make me laugh. And what did I learn? I like to learn all the time. I like to learn all the time, everything. Does your Scottish have doesn't make you laugh? That's my question. <laughs> no. <laughs> and is his, is his accent stronger than yours? No, I've got a posh accent. <laughs> oh, you've got a posh accent, yeah. but what about him? Does he have a... No. No, he's got a posh accent as well. No, he's not got a posh accent. Oh, he hasn't. So no. you, I wouldn't understand him. It's basically, no, that's basically, yeah. All oh, right, yeah. okay. He married up. Oh, he married up. <laughs> <laughs> and and, 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 and the, so he doesn't make you laugh. Because, all right, I'll tell you why. Because I find Scottish people funny. Yeah. Right? And so I think, because like when I see a Scottish comedian, he just seems to be naturally funny. And it annoys the hell out of me that I have to work at it, right? <laughs> And that he doesn't, or it seems like he doesn't. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think we have, we might seem to have the unfair share of funny people in Scotland. Um, which is great because we've got nothing else going for us. Okay. <laughs> Just like brown people. We've got nothing going for us. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I think, I think we've had comedians in Scotland for a long time. Before Billy Conley, there was Stanley Baxter and a whole load of other... Um, Ricky, what's his name? Um, so, so, did you grow up with uh, watching a lot of uh, Scottish comedians? Yeah, I grew up watching a lot of comedy and television. My my father loved film and television, um, both Bollywood, Pakistani, and we used to watch Bruce Forsyth, Generation Game. Um, we watched Mork and Wise. My dad loved Mork and Wise, absolutely loved it. Two Ronnies. So, and my dad had a great sense of humour, an absolutely fantastic sense of humour. Did he have a glass reading accent? No, he didn't. No, no he didn't. It'd be so he, funny if he did. If, if he was still alive, then he might have by now, but he didn't. Yeah. He died at 45, and he would have a glass reading accent then. Um, and I think it's it's difficult when you when you come across as an adult to a different country, it's difficult for you to lose your accent unless you get elocution lessons. But if you're born and brought up as I am in, in Scotland, then I'm going to have the accent of whatever I'm from. Like you do. Yeah. Well, I, I had elocution lessons, by the way. So, <laughs> I can tell, I yeah. can tell. <laughs> Didn't worry about it. <laughs> it cost me a lot of money. Back. Yeah, it cost me a lot of money. Get a <laughs> refund, get a refund. <laughs> That's good, I like that. I, I'm actually trying to learn an Indian accent. Really? because Yeah, because I'd love to be able to do that on stage. You know, like, come out with an Indian accent, and then uh, for a minute or so, and then switch to English. So I do. Oh, do you, can you do so? You can do an Indian accent. Yeah. Go on, let's hear it. Go on. I'd love to hear an Indian accent. A glass region with an Indian accent. That's an okay, I'll say, some, I'll say something and I'll go. Um, oh, so, um, oh, so, what makes you, uh, what, what's the most profound thing you've learned? Now that's a very difficult question to answer. I mean, uh, the most profound, it depends what you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about comedy, then I think the most profound thing I've learned is that brown people aren't all related. Yeah. <laughs> See, that, I, I tell them we are. I tell them we're all related. Every single one of us, you know. I tell them that sometimes, but it really depends what the audience is like. If they're warm towards me, then I'm, I don't see we're related. But if they're not warm towards me, I like to make them feel guilty and squirm. You know, I get the feeling you're putting the accent on. <laughs> That is not your real accent. I get the feeling you're working hard on that accent. Well, you mean my Indian accent? Yeah. That is my Indian accent. That's what I use. But it, but it, but you um, did you learn it or? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. It's put on. Yeah, it's, that's what I mean. It yeah, feels it's, like it's put on. It's put on. Yeah. It's put on. I don't have my original Pakistani accent now. I don't. I don't. I don't think I ever had my Pakistani accent. Um, yeah. And what's the most profound things you've learned in life? What would you pass on? What would you want to pass on to your kids, for example? Like um, in terms of learning. I think the learning. most important thing is to be happy in life. To be happy and to be kind. And um, if you live your life being happy and kind, then you will live a happy, you will live a happy life because you're going to meet the same type of people, or you're going to attract the happy and kind people into your life. And um, yeah, and if people are horrible to you, which which they can be, I mean, I. 
I went to see this play, right? And the company is called In, In Loyal Company. It's an absolutely fantastic play, absolutely wonderful. My actress called David William Bryan, amazing. I mean, four star parts are absolutely wonderful. When I went to see the play, it was a standing ovation. You had to, it was on at the Pleasant Courtyard, yeah. and they had to put on extra shows. Those extra sh shows were all sold out. Now, it doesn't have PR, it doesn't have an agent, it just marketed it. No flyers, nothing, no posters, it's marketed it really well. It's a beautiful story. I mean, I was crying at the end of it, right? I was crying at the end of the story. I bumped into the actor today and just I congratulated him, and he said, Read this. And it was the most horrible review. Wow. Most horrible review you can ever believe, and I thought those, you know, the reviewers didn't get it. They, they just didn't. I mean, they probably never acted in their life before. They didn't get the story, and and it was just, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't a. If if the play was bad and badly written and badly directed, that you could all accept that it wasn't. It was just a personal view, and that was really hurtful and really cutting, and that was totally un unrequited. It wasn't wanted. It wasn't wanted, and I think the people who wrote that review should be ashamed and embarrassed. And I really felt for that guy, really, really. And I so wanted to just, I just gave him a hug, you know, and I just said, look, people who are horrible to you like that, they actually are having a really shitty life. Yeah. And it's the way that they take it out is just they just be horrible to other people. So. But it's not easy when you know what it's like when you get a review. Of course you take it to heart. But what I tried to say to him was that, look, thousands of people have come to see your show. Thousands, right? Standing ovation, okay? Sold out shows, every single, yeah. every single and show that, sold and out. It doesn't matter what the reviews say. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But it, of course it hurts. So I think teaching my children is to be kind, and to be loving, and to be happy. Would you um, would you want them to learn the Pakistani culture or the? Uh... So I've brought them up very mixed. I mean, they're Muslim. Yeah. Um, so we've tried to adapt the best of both worlds. Try to weave this path that actually incorporates you know best of both worlds. So they're very educated people, <laughs> but none of them are doctors. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> if in an Indian culture, if your if your kids aren't doctors, you failed. I have failed. I failed. Oh. Totally failed. Yes. No, because for me, uh, when I was growing up, I, I almost distanced my culture completely. I wanted to become completely white, completely westernized. But then once I started embracing the, uh, my, my Indian culture again, I can, I can now see that it gives me an extra color. You know, like it gives me an extra layer yeah. that a white person wouldn't have, like uh, an English person wouldn't have on life, on everything. So I see it like having two cultures and growing out with two cultures is having like an extra uh, color on the on your TV screen. I, I get that, you know? I get that. I run, um, I work for NHS and I run cardiovascular risk clinics. So it's for people who have type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Wow. But I run them specifically for ethnic minority people for up in the low. So most of my patients are either Pakistani, Indian, Bengali. So I get that extra layer through that. So I feel as if I'm really helping them because there's such a, a lack of knowledge about type 2 diabetes. Yes. And, and so, you know, I'm fulfilling all those things. I'm getting that extra layer through, through that. But I do understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm type 2. Are you? Yeah. But I, I, I don't do anything with it. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to go into a clinic. <laughs> Are you on tablets now? Let me take your blood pressure. <laughs> I found out I had type two. Um, I, I, I used to ride motorcycles, mm -hmm. and I crashed it like properly. Yeah. You know, and I ended up disabled for about six, seven months, um, and uh, they couldn't fix me. Right? They couldn't you weren't healing. Me so I wasn't healing. Yeah, yeah, and it was because I had type two diabetes, and, yeah. the, and that wouldn't allow. But as soon as I found, we found out. Um, You're fine. Yeah. So, so you're quite unusual because the uh, majority of people have type 2 diabetes, 80% of them is because they're overweight, but 20% of them are not, and you're of that 20% who, who isn't overweight but has type 2 diabetes. The, the thing that I will say to you actually, and this will be useful for everybody who's, who's watching, is get your vitamin D levels checked. Yeah. If people have dark skin, that you need to so take important. vitamin D. Yes. Because not only does it make you develop type 2 diabetes, it increases your blood pressure, greater risk of uh, developing cancer, MS, all, lots of horrible, horrible diseases. So, we, because our genes 
we've been used to millions of years in a warm climate, right? Yeah. And we might have been here for 40 years, so it's not enough. And Our bodies skin, haven't adapted. Yeah. And this skin doesn't absorb it sunlight doesn't. very well. Yeah. So it's really, really important for us to really top up our vitamin D. Yes. So everybody, go and get your, your vitamin D levels checked. And if they don't, don't come and listen to your Della Mama, do them out of them. That means I'll come and touch you at you. So, so I used to be, uh, I used to be fat. Really? Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, but once uh, when you're in hospital and you can't move and you can't eat, uh, you tend to lose weight quite quickly. I, <laughs> so, must, I must try that. <laughs> I, I call it, I call it a crash course, a dieting course. Uh, yeah. Not the recommended way to lose weight. No. But. But you yeah, get I mean, it off. Yeah, 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 off. yeah. A lot of people say that if you lose weight really quickly, you don't keep it off. That's not true. You lose weight quickly, you can still keep it off. Yeah. There's research being done at the moment. Um, it's called the Direct Study, part of Newcastle University and Edinburgh and Glass University. And they were doing this, reducing your calories over three months, and then seeing if the weight stays off. And after a year, people had lost 15 kilos, and after a year, they'd only put on one kilo. So, I mean, I've lost just under stone this year. Lost half some last year. Um, well, I think during this fringe, I put on half a stone. Yeah, fringes, <laughs> oh, do, that. fringes do that. All the cafe lattes. Cafe lattes, and we'll have a Snicker bar, and then we'll have a Mars bar, and then you know, like you're on the roof the whole time. So a lot of time, I mean, I bring my lunch with me. Yeah. So like I have spinach, and I have um, I make homemade chicken. I have tomato cucumber, all organic, pomegranate seeds. I guess. <laughs> no, and. Um, or smoked salmon, I had smoked salmon salad today. But I don't have anything for my evening meal. So then you pick up a packet of crisps, don't you? Yes. Or a roll yeah. or something. So, so once, or, or once a the fringe, kebab. Yeah. I've avoided that because I don't want to be ill. Yeah. So um, once fringe is over, I'll be back on the straight and narrow. So hopefully this time next year, I'll be another half stone lighter. That's Great. the plan. Yes. That's the plan, half stone lighter for next year. Well, I, I, um, I, I had to lose it because. Um, I managed to keep it because I, the diabetes actually, for me personally, I think it's been a plus. Yeah. Uh, because it's it's made it's forced me to control my diet like really well. So yeah. I properly and it, and if I didn't have diabetes, mm -hmm. I wouldn't control my diet this well because I used to be 78 kilograms. Right. I'm now 68.5 kilograms. That's great. And it's never changed since. And you're not on any medication. Nothing. And you ever do you ever. Get your HbA1c checked or? Uh, I used to, but uh, I haven't had it for ages. Um, but my, you like my energy levels. I think I'm at my healthiest yeah. than I've ever been. That's great. I'm. I have so much energy now. Like I run around like a, a like a twenty. A twenty year old. Yeah. Do you do yoga? I do yoga. I do meditation. Okay. That I also, helps. Yeah. I also do uh, weight training. Right. I do stretching, weight right. training. So, um, I do loads of stuff. Yeah. A lot of people think don't understand what yoga is, but yoga is really just stretching every single part of your body. And it's actually really good. Stretching is really good for diabetes because what happens is it massages your internal organs. So massages your pancreas, increases the blood supply to it, and then releases more insulin. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. thank you. This yeah. wasn't meant to be fun at all. <laughs> She's waiting for you. Yeah, she's waiting for oh, you. she's waiting for you. Oh, brilliant. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so what, what, what do you love about life? I love living. I love eating. I love making people laugh. I love being happy. I love having a good time. Yeah, just laughing. Actually, just laughing. But people making me laugh is what I, I love, and I, I love helping people. I think that I can't get away from that. And it sometimes gets me into trouble because I help people when they don't want to. <laughs> but uh, I've learned to hold myself back, not help people. Yeah. See, I went into a consultation with you. Yeah. You know, just. Yeah, just, I, just, it, we, we, uh, as, as soon as somebody says, oh, uh, this or something, yeah. we, the first thing we want to do is give them advice. Of course. I must be a whether man. They, this is a man do, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> men do this. Yeah. <laughs> Is to give advice of yeah. whether they want it, whether they yeah. need it, yeah. whether even your advice is any good or not. Yeah. We still give advice. So mm -hmm. one of the things I've had to learn is like when somebody says something to me, is to is to is to just listen. Yeah. Is like even if I think I know better, I'm like, yeah, well done, mate. That's really good. I yeah. do that as well now, actually, yeah. because a lot of the time um, people just want to talk. Yes, they just that's want it. To yeah, talk. yeah, and, and, and they, they don't want your advice. No, they just yeah. want and. To be honest, they often know what to do. Yeah. People know inside what to do. And if you give them the opportunity to talk, 
it's it'll come out in that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the that's the, that's for me was the hardest thing to learn is not to give advice. Is if they ask for it, brilliant. Then give it yeah. to them. So but if they yeah. don't, yeah. Yeah, when I do my consultations and like I know what they're doing is wrong, like eating, you know, eating too much salt, eating sugar, too much bread, fat, yeah. blah 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 blah. And so I, I ask them, you know, I'm here to help you. Do you want my help? Do you want to listen to what advice I'm going to give you? And then they have to agree to that. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah. And that, then if they say yes or no, whatever they say, then we go with it. Yes. If they say no, then we just we just say right, I have to increase your tablets. Well, I, I cut, you, you're talking about sugar and bread. Yeah. I cut it all out. There's no sugar. There's no bread. Yeah. None of that rubbish yeah. in my yeah. diet whatsoever. Yeah. And as soon as I did that, everything changed. Yeah. Totally. So, oh, you know, one of the things I found that has helped me the biggest <laughs> uh -huh. is ghee. Ghee's supposed to be good. Yeah. yeah I, I, I make my own ghee. Do you? Yeah. It's. Mira, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Next time. <laughs> No, it, I, I use, um, I, I've, I've learned to make ghee, uh -huh. so I make like, I don't know, uh, a lot of ghee at home, like, I don't know, ma I'll make like a, a kilogram yeah. of ghee, right. and I will eat, like, this body eats about a kilogram of ghee a month, wow. I eat a lot of ghee, wow. but because I don't, I'm actually ketosis, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so yeah. I don't burn uh, carbs or no, sugar, you're, bur you're burning the ghee, Burning the ghee. Yeah. I'm burning the ghee, yeah. yeah. So my body needs loads of ghee. And the ghee is amazing. As soon as I started eating ghee, like everything changed for me. Yeah. The amount of energy I have now yeah. is And crazy. coconut oil is very good for you. Yeah. Well. So coconut, coconut oil. oil and ghee are my yeah. two go-to. Go yeah, the problem yeah. is that, that our people have ghee and rati, you know? Yes. So that's if that and have too much ghee and salmon, that's a problem, right? Yes. And with salmon they then have roti or chawal or naan bread or whatever. And that's where the problem comes. And we eat too many sweets. Yeah. I was in India, right? And in India they have uh, sweet shops, which are just sweet shops. Like there's nothing in there. You go in there, you can have a whole meal and it's just sweets. Yeah, and sounds like paradise, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going there, I'm going there. <laughs> I mean, they they took because I spent like a month in New Delhi, yeah. and they used to take me to these uh, sweet type shops. Yeah, yeah. And all they had was sweets in there. Like there was nothing else, just sweets. You know, yeah. like the proper Indian yeah, sweets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the problem burping. with them is they taste too damn good, and it's so easy just to overindulge. Yeah. And India is the number one capital in the world for diabetes. Really? Yeah, India is. After America? No. In, First, before America. Wow. So we, we are we are world leaders in diabetes because we and also we, in cricket and cricket. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but diabetes, mainly diabetes. Oh, yeah, I know. yeah. All right. Brilliant. That's perfect. Any any last message you want to say? So um, I'm going to be coming to the Edinburgh Fringe next year, 2019. My show is going to be something along the lines of the Asian Ellen DeGeneres. So if you're coming up to Scotland to the Fringe in August, come and see me. And um, I'll give you lots of advice. Yay, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I will put that. <laughs>